Right, in this video, um, I want to focus on exchange rates and what will affect the value of the exchange rates. So, what we should know is that an exchange rate, it measures the value of one currency in terms of another. And on the forex market, the foreign exchange market, the value of a currency, well, it changes for the same reason that the price of anything changes. It's based on the forces of supply and demand. So if we look at the euro pound exchange rate, so we're looking here for how many euros you get for the pound. So you've got the demand for our currency, and you've got the supply of our currency. So what you should get is this equilibrium exchange rate. Which basically means where the demand for your currency is exactly equal to the supply of your currency. And that can only happen if you've got an overall balance on the balance of payments. Okay, if you've got a deficit, it basically means that the supply of your currency would exceed the demand. So in effect, what that would mean is you're up here, which would mean the currency would need to get weaker or depreciate. If you were down here, it would basically mean you've got a balance of payment surplus, which means that the sum of the current and financial and capital accounts um, is in an overall surplus, which means the demand for your currency outweighs the supply. The currency would appreciate, it would need to get stronger. And while we're on this point, few key terms here that people often confuse. The ones that you should remember from AS are depreciation and appreciation, so depreciate and appreciate. This is where the force of supply and demand will affect the market value of a currency. Okay, so when a currency loses value, you know, you get less euros per pound in effect, your currency is a weaker value. Uh, if it appreciates, then it, you, you get more euros per pound. It's got a stronger value. Now, this isn't to be confused with um, a devaluation and a revaluation. These are when the government intervenes in the currency value or the central bank intervenes in the currency value to alter the currency's value. So devaluation is where we manipulate the currency deliberately to lower the value. Revaluation will be when we look to raise the value. And these are things that are often used when you have some form of a fixed exchange rate system. Now let's think about now about what could affect the value of a currency. So what affects your exchange rate, if you like? Well, there's a whole host of different things. It could come down to the competitiveness of your economy. Okay, so for example, an economy that's very competitive should really be very, very good at sucking in lots of investment from across the world. People look to try to take advantage of those investment opportunities. But also as well, if you've got a very competitive economy, you should be looking to export more across the world, more absolute and competitive advantages, which means for people to buy your currency, uh, to buy your goods, they've got to buy your currency, which will raise the demand. Of course, if you lack competitiveness, then you'll have more imports coming in, you'll run a trade deficit. Um, this means you're selling your currency to buy foreign currencies, which will bring down the value of your currency. Now, linked to that one, you've got inflation. Okay, an economy with high inflation will see export demand fall across the world, which will ultimately mean that less people want to demand your currency, which again would make it get weaker. If you've got low inflation relative to your main trading partners, it could lead to a high demand for your exports as you gain price competitiveness. This could see your currency start to get stronger across the world. Uh, the domestic interest rate, again, it's all relative to what's happening in other parts across the world, is also an important consideration. Um, think about hot money. If your domestic central bank, so the Bank of England, was to cut interest rates, the returns available in the UK lower, hot money would flood out, there'd be a low demand for our currency, and it would start to get weaker. But higher interest rates, you tend to find your currency will get stronger. 
uh, that is simply because hot money will flood back into your economy again. So people demand your currency. Um, speculation. Again, this is kind of linked to hot money. Um, if people think your currency is going to get stronger, buy it. And they'll buy it to sort of reap them profits, if you like, that will make it get stronger. So think about the ironic thing behind that. If people speculate your currency will get stronger, it probably will. Um, if people speculate your currency will get weaker, people sell it to beat the loss, and that will lead to your currency getting weaker. Um, it also depends on what's happening with other currencies across the world. Um, if other currencies are in some kind of crisis, um, people speculate they're going to get weaker, or there's a high government debt for some country, and people think that economy might kick into recession, people might pull their money out of that economy and stick it in yours. They might view it as a safe haven. Okay, so the pounds have been a relatively stable currency, the same for the Swiss franc. In times of crisis, people might chuck their money into their economies, which will make your currency get stronger. Um, balance of payments performance. We know the UK has got an overall deficit on the current account. We prop up our exchange rate through the capital and financial accounts. If we struggle to attract the investments on the capital and financial accounts, then what would happen is we'd still have the overall deficit on the current account. It would mean the demand for our currency would fall. The currency would start to get weaker. Um, linked to that one is the government intervention. And we're tying this in with the previous one. In China, they've got a huge current account surplus. Well, their balance of payments balances through running a deficit on their financial account in particular. So it, it loads the demand for their currency and keeps the currency at a particular level, which is good for their competitiveness. Now, how do they do it? Well, it, it's government manipulation, basically, where the government will basically buy financial assets across the world. This could be shares in foreign businesses. It could be foreign direct investment flows into other economies across the world. It could even be simply hot money by investors in that particular economy. But the idea would be that if they run that huge deficit in their capital account, they're selling their own currency to buy yours. High demand for yours, it will bring your value up. Okay, um, now the other one is high government debt. Governments finance their debt by issuing bonds. So people can buy bonds in the government, basically, that will generate some kind of interest rate. Um, if investors across the world think that a, a national government's got too high a debt, and they're running the risk of default on that debt, then people will sell those government bonds, and they flood out of that economy in droves. That will lower the demand for your currency. Okay, so high debt could lead to people pulling money out of your economy, which will bring down the value of your currency.